Good morning, I'm Roberto Tejada, professor here in the Art History Department, and we're here in the very uh, generous space that is the Visual Resource Library that uh, Adriana Stevenson has generously allowed us to use today to interview our Meadows Prize winner, Tania Burguera, who will maybe say a few things about herself. Um, well, I'm Tania, and I've been um, growing every day. Since as you've been an here? activist and as a person, as a as a political person. So that's the goal of my life. Tanya and I know each other <laughs> quite a long time, so um, I thought that we'd begin today speaking about, I think, what mm -hmm. is most approximate to your research right now, which mm -hmm. is your immigrant, immigrant project. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could begin there, tell us a little bit about that, mm -hmm. and then I'll ask you mm -hmm. about some of your prior works, and then maybe we can end in the present. Okay. So, well, basically, um, immigrant movement grew up out of the shame of not identifying myself as an immigrant and maybe you could talk a little bit about yeah. your various travels which make you an immigrant oh, okay okay yeah okay so should we start over from there? no no <laughs> go right on um so basically i i am from cuba i live in cuba most of my life although by uh, when i was a kid i was traveling as well because my father was um in this, uh, diplomatic diplomatic mm -hmm. so i think at it was very important for me because i did in 98 99 when i start um my mfa program i already was a guggenheim fellow right and i already had been in some uh biennales and so, but i felt like cuba was becoming very uh suffocating you say that yes suffocating. and but which traditionally had a very critical and experimental Yeah, art but all pedagogy. of these people had left in 92. Many you know, of whom went yeah. to Mexico City. Many, yeah, Mexico City. And, and all of that generation that was actually the ox oxygen I was, uh, you know, breathing. breathing from, they left. And I, it left this kind of emptiness that these young artists like me had to cover up without being ready, let's say, and, you know. But, but I think it's, it's good, you have to step up in whatever happens in life. But, but I feel like also, there were a few circumstances, I feel like the art world was too self-celebratory and people were too satisfied with things that looked like too low as a bar for me. And... Are you referring to mostly work from Latin America or... In, I at was, the international level. I was thinking both. Yeah. I mean, I mean, people were getting excited about having a gallery and having and selling work, and that was not what I was pursuing with my work. I mean, I, I felt like I had no, I had to negotiate my space constantly regarding those issues, and uh, also I felt, to be honest, that people were becoming too bourgeois too quickly as artists, and I feel that's a very dangerous thing. And I wanted to learn. I, I felt like I had so much to do and in the other hand to be completely honest there was a situation in which I have done a lot in terms of like confronting the system and, and there was a moment in which I had to decide am I going to work from inside the system which is a very dangerous situation because you know it's a very complicated negotiation or am I going out of the system so I felt that was also part of the you know, it was a very Would it even have been conceivable to be outside the system in in this moment inside when you're inside the system when you're still I think navigating between now. Havana and that's, Chicago? That's that's what the position I wanted to have, because for example, I never say when people say when did you left, I say I don't I don't define myself as somebody who has left, right? Because that would be to assume and to continue the the fallacy you say in English the fallacy yeah. of of the government in Cuba where they separate people in who left because they're not right and there's no other them. logic but the inside yeah, exactly. outside right and it's only a semantics but it's very important you sure know, to say say i don't um i don't identify myself with that ideology so i'm i'm not somebody who has left cuba right so in this yeah. displaced let's call it displaced position mm -hmm. you begin to identify with the migratory or migrant uh subjectivity but it's interesting because at the same time uh, the, the global artwork is privileging those artists who don't exactly. have a particular national or regional space, right? Exactly. I think that, that question has many aspects. One first aspect is the fact that people always try to identify yourself in this kind of uh, easy target, you know, where what happens is like they don't want to deal with the complexity of the issue. And, and, and much of this is market driven as well. The market wants to yeah, have. Yeah, but even with Cuba, for example, even people in Cuba say, "Oh, you know, you don't, you, you are living there." And I was like, "No," because in my head, I'm still living in Cuba. 
you know? And in my head, I feel like everything I'm learning, I'm going one day to put it back in Cuba. So it feels to me that it's a process, it's not an ending, anything. And actually I did, because at one point I went back to Cuba and I opened an art school that was political art school where I trained, let's say, or we had a space, let's say we have a civic space that was not able to happen in society through the school where people could join and discuss anything politics-wise, you know, gender-wise, anything yes. they wanted to do, you know, that they would not do anywhere else. I think and it's I indicative that it was also called uh, Arte de Conducta, conducta yeah. conduct behavior, art yeah. or behavioral yeah. art, right? Exactly. And I, and I feel I couldn't have done that unless I have gone to this position where I was in Cuba, outside of Cuba, you know, where I was seeing everything through the lens of what can I bring back, you know, right. or what can I learn that can use later. So I feel like this kind of like, you know, here you're here are very complicated because, yeah, people sometimes are in Cuba and they're not in Cuba mm -hmm. because they are looking at foreign TV programs, they, are, they want to deal with issues that are not the reality. So who is more, in, you know, right. so I feel like that said, I did never identify myself as an immigrant, which is a problem with my political education. You know, I think it's very interesting that in Cuba, we're very political, but we don't have political education. Right. You know, we're very political because we are forced to deal with politics all the time, but the way it is shown to us politics is wrong. Because it's not politics in terms of like your own rights, it's politics in terms of like you have to follow a government. But how would you compare that to the United States where I see that at least the public sphere no longer is a Belong is an education people. into yeah. political thinking, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that in the United States uh, there is an, a different issue where I feel that in a way, like the smart gesture they have done, the smart move is to bring up in the conversation celebrity, you know, mm. and the fact that you have to talk so much about your own personal moments that you avoid the politicization of the personal. Well, this is you also... Know, because this everything is, also is banalized and everything is like a joke. And, and it's to avoid you, looking at things mm -hmm. as structural problems, but rather personal Correct. or individual right. problems. It's narrative, it's the narrative Correct. instead of the 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 deconstruction. Yeah. You know, it's pro producing narrative instead of thinking in the deconstructive mode, mm -hmm. you know, or, or an analytical mode, which is, you know... So at what moment do you begin... Celebratory in a way. Yeah. It's almost like... Everybody has to be happy here because it's a mandate of the Constitution, so let's let's be happy, no? Yes, and there is a tradition yeah. of American optimism that, exactly. that is about the individual and, and self-overcoming. I can stand it. I, mean, <laughs> I can understand it. I can stand that. I'm sorry. So at what point do you begin to I mean, I, 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 I would it? like to be happy, but it's such a fake... It, it, I think that the original idea is very good, but I think the way it has been carried out is becoming a fake. Uh, in position. That well, it's have, it's know, also like an alibi for all other all yeah, kinds of, right. of practices, right? And also it's an escapism because I have worked with some assistants who are Americans and we have problems in the project and let's deal with it. No, right. everything is fine. Everything is fine. I'm like, no, let's talk about the problems, you know? Because <laughs> And then it's a way of not moving. You know? Moving forward. Because whatever, but that's my own teaching. And in terms of uh, then that moment in which you identify with, let's call it immigrant subjectivity. It was interesting because I was with a person, my, my partner at the time was an extremely political person um, in his own way, but um, it was interesting because I was inside this kind of, it's a shame to say that, but I was inside this kind of privileged, protected situation where because you're an immigrant that do not have to go through, because Cuban, because mm -hmm. Cuban have a special treatment, and also you have a community in the arts that can satisfy you in manners other people in other communities might not have. Right. You know, if you are a jornalero, you might not have the same realization in your own community that you can have as your analysis because you have all the things you can be, um, you know, uh, given, you know, come on. There are other elements that you can be seen through or, you know, satisfied by, so reconocerte, you know, people oh, recognize. Self-recognition, yeah. sure. So I feel like other groups that of immigrants who have other jobs, or if you are an academic as well, for example, uh, and I was working in academia at some point, so I had all the satisfaction of this recognition I could have through my work, that other people, maybe because they work in, a, let's say, in a... Um, this is the division between the 
mano de obra, like things made by hand, let's say, I don't know in English, but an Manual intellectual, labor, sure. an intellectual, an intellectual labor, labor sure. you know? So still there is this big division, so the people who mostly are being recognized as immigrants are the people who do labor. Uh, or you say like, como dijiste, mano de labor. Sure. labor. Day workers. Or day workers, yeah. or things that are not intellectually related, you know? Although I think they are, but yes. that's the way people see it. And I feel like I also was caught in this idea of um, immigrants are only those people, or they are poor people, or they are undocumented, or they are people who, you know, who are very different than me. Right. And that's not true. So I feel like answering your question that you asked 20 minutes ago, like I identify when I moved to Paris, I had to have a different, a new immigrant experience again, to to realize all the. Com all the things that were the same and different from moving back and how you have to renegotiate yourself when you establish yourself in a new place. And you also and see the way different nations, different um, political systems begin to uh, mm -hmm. give, shape, give shape to immigrant and immigrant politics. Um, yeah, but you know politics. what? Everybody thinks the same BS about immigrants. No, but I've been in Mexico, which is, it was a big realization for me. Like, a big shock, like I went to Mexico to do part of this project and I thought, okay, Mexicans have been treated so badly in the United States that I'm sure they have this kind of like solidarity or no. The, the opposite, they treat like Guatemala. South American. Oh, and like, that border worst, is a, very, is a hot you know? spot as well, absolutely. You know, so I feel like this this kind of... Um, it's These a hierarchies of... It's a problem that is everywhere. Yeah. And that's what I like about this project, like it's a project that is one of the issues that carry what I think about art, that is something that has to work in a very specific local level, having a global uh, dimension mm -hmm. or consequence. So I feel is that's the hard part of the project, you know, how can you still be faithful to the person you're working with that is, has a name, has a history, has a relation with you, and how you dimension that in a global way that all the people who don't care about that person will understand. You know, so it's, um, so I went to Paris and I, I saw these riots I was there, you? yeah, I was there with the volume, and I was walking with the curator actually of a museum and another artist she was introducing to me, and we walk for a place I was not in the riots. Um, it's a new development they're doing in an area of Paris where they have the Biblioteca Mitterrand. We were walking and we found a gun, like an actual physical gun that was broken. I never thought a gun could be broken, of course, of course it can, but it's not an image that you have, like you always think like this kind of stuff. And the, 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 the gun was broken and I took it, I, I wish I had taken and but I left it because, and it was kind of the realization of this is real and understanding like immigrants do not have the option of another language other than violence. You know, there is no way they can access power directly. The best they can do is having a mediator from the place. So I start thinking like, why these people cannot have access to power? How can these people cannot be, they've been here all their life, this second generation already, their kids are born here, you know, like all these things. And, and I start thinking about, well, maybe they need a political party. They need to organize as a political party. And then the whole problem started. Because people are against those constructions. But I still advocate for, for having, I think part of the problem is that there is, very few people in power that have that experience and can, you know, but there are many other problems. So, so you would say that the primary uh, format or vehicle, uh, the material vehicle for your new art practice is organization, yes, organizing. Yes, yes, exactly. And I said, that's a very good way to say it because I feel that my materials yes, exactly. are not physical, they are like, structural, exactly. organizational, mm -hmm. managerial. I exactly. Mean, so maybe we could talk about how the the immigrant project is related to other works, maybe some of the most recent works mm -hmm. where you're using the moment, to use that word, mm -hmm. for example, in the, in the Havana Biennial, mm -hmm. to b create spaces of articulation, of speech, uh, mm -hmm. activating mm -hmm. what otherwise, without that simple gesture, would have mm -hmm. been impossible. Yeah, well, it's funny because I feel like when I started working with the Ana Mendieta project and the, and the newspaper in, in the 90s when I was a student, I felt I was in a very good path of understanding the gesture instead of the production of the object, uh, instead of uh, thinking more about the location of friction instead of the, the construction of an environment, you know, in the sense of like a sculpture, you know, or, or, or something to be collected or something permanent, you know? I've been always against the permanent 
Maybe because of revolution, because revolution is always contradicting itself, but every time is every every time it contradicts is the permanent final decision. Even though policies change Even from day to day. Even the week before they were <laughs> saying the contrary. <laughs> so I feel I'm I'm always struggling with this idea of permanence. So I felt I was going through a very good path where I understood that I wanted to acquire as an artist my gesture is to acquire the resources of power. I don't want to talk about it, I don't want to show you how bad it is, I want to take it over and do something with it. So in that sense I did a newspaper. It was the first independent newspaper published in Cuba after, you know, at least in that time. Memorias. And Memoria La Memories of the post-war. And I really enjoy it because it was the first time that people who were not in the art knew about the project. My aunt called me, say, what have you done? You know, so so that's that's really cool. You know, like the neighbors. I mean, this is and the print run was really limited. So it was it's, it's small. It's it was five hundred the first, and the second is a thousand. It arrived so in Mexico. Like, I remember it was that everywhere. Ev people were handing it from hand, you know, from from yeah, library and to library, were photocopying it, and yes. you know, and people were handing. It. So it was very, int but but after that, something very intense happened. Uh, so the censorship was very specific, and it became more very emotionally complicated, and uh, and I felt like I couldn't do more of that. Like it, I mean, I think yeah, when governments understand the, the power of uh, of art, they, they can use the logic of it. They can yeah to to either yeah. um, squelch it. Or, or change it yes. for their own advantage. So yes. In this case, I think the people who were in charge of the culture were not so savvy or they were kind of coming out of the censorship they had in the 90s. Yes. It was too close and their strategy was censoring and kind of like putting some like pressure, like fear or stuff like that. And so I feel like I had, I, I stopped doing art for a while because I didn't know what else could I do. And, and then I started doing performance, which was a mistake, I think. But the thing is, like, this is when I returned to that, is with the school. You know, the idea of, like, you know what, now I feel strong enough again to do it. And the, and the piece I did in Havana with the microphones, for example. Which are performative based. Yeah, it's performative. But, but it's an art and a conduct, it's behavior art, because, or conduct art, because it's a piece that is a conduit for something to happen. Right. So, like you said, for, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a staging of a potential situation. Exactly. And people have to decide to see the potential is going to be a reality or just stay as a potential, you know? So I think the responsibility goes to them, in a way. Which is easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it's part of this activist attitude. You sure. know, it's like people have to be activated. They cannot yeah. be just, you know. Well, we've had the opportunity to spend some time with Reina Maria Rodriguez yeah. recently, and that led us to talk about other kinds of spaces. I mean, I think it was really important for us to have that conversation after mm. many mm -hmm. years of not having had that conversation. Reina Maria Rodriguez has held a what might be called an alternative space for literary production mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. her rooftop apartment since the 19, late 1980s. Mm -hmm. And I think these are interesting places as well for thinking, yeah, yeah. rewriting art history to include those kinds of spaces yeah, absolutely. that are also um, potential. Yeah. Uh, I think this is interesting because what is the role of education? No, I think education is seen in a non-institutional way, right? In a kind of uh, more chaotic or maybe more, you know, experimental, experimental way. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I feel that it's very hard when you sustain a project for so long, and I think it was easier for me because I just arrived after Documenta, so I had all this aura around me. So I did that project, I did it for seven years, but then I realized I had to close it, which is a different position because I think she has to keep it alive. Right, right. You know, in my case, I felt I had to close it because uh, many reasons. One of the reasons is the government finally understood what I was doing. It took them a little bit to understand. And, uh, well, you were producing activists. I, I am, like yeah. literally, I tell so you So you were using morning, pedagogy? Experimental Not that I, I didn't shape it that way, right. but that's because the discussion we had. Well, the kinds of questions that art, yeah. the and kind of art making that you were interested in, yeah. uh, is a critical is a critical art, and therefore yeah. Uh, yeah. opens up these. And it's interesting because, for example, all of the students or the participants of the project now are around the world, and they're doing activist stuff. And actually, this morning I was um, chatting with one of them who live in Venezuela, and I say, "What are you doing at home? Go out on the street." Right. You know, like still, you know, 
So this kind of, yeah, it was, um, but it's interesting because it's important not to institutionalize yourself. I've been always, I've been using institution as a form, but always trying to escape institutionalizing, right. you know, so we making it hard for people to... To, yeah. keep, to let it congeal or to yeah. ossify. Mm -hmm. Well, we have about a minute left. Okay. Now that you've been here in Dallas for some time, maybe you could talk about what the potential that you see here, the work, working with students, working with some of the faculty, um, mm. places for creating moments. There it might be too early, but... Yeah, I, it is early, but there are many, many interesting things that had not been touched in this place. And many things that are um, evident conflicts. Do you see them in, in yeah. without giving too much away yet, uh, are they spatial, are they, are they interpersonal? I think, um, hmm, how can I say that I don't say? Um, I feel that um, there are many, in this place, there is a lot of money that has been directed to certain policies, uh, and that is something that has to be addressed in a way, or something that has to be think about. Um, there are a lot of spaces for, for example, I was just talking with the director of the Human Rights Center and we were talking about immigration, how come there is not still here a very active uh, situation regarding immigration, and this is, hello, this is, Texas. You know. yes. Um So I think there are many, many uh, spaces that should be activated, let's say. I look forward to your activation. We'll see. I mean, so everybody man. has to be activated together. It cannot be just me. Sign me on. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Vanya. Bye.